Hey guys, Assalamu Alaikum. In this tutorial, we'll get into exploring if-else statements. If you were with me in the last tutorial, I ended the video by mentioning an important programming concept called control flow. And today you'll get to see control flow in action, which is defined as a blueprint for your programs that show the order of operations you'd like to execute. This order is structured based on certain conditions. In the case of this video, you'll see if-else statements being used as instructions for executing certain blocks of code, given if their condition returns true. All right. So let's dive into the first one, the if statement. You can see an example of an if condition here, saying if three is greater than two, ending with a colon. And we know that this condition gives an output value true. The statement is followed by a print response below saying, yes, three is greater than two. When I run this, you'll see that our response gets printed out to the console. Okay, so what's actually going on here? Well, our print response was only executed because of our if statement having a true condition, quite simply put. And if I had made this condition a false by just saying 3 is less than 2 here, printing this out then gives us nothing in the console. So now what happened is Python checked if our if condition is true or false. Given that it's a false now, the if blocks response code is skipped over and nothing is printed out since there are no more lines of code below here. All right. So just to confirm that this if statement block gets skipped, let me just place a print statement outside of the if block saying skipped. Printing this out then shows that indeed the if blocks response gets skipped since the only thing we see printed out is the sentence outside of the if block. Cool. And by making this condition true again, Running the program then shows that both these statements get printed out within the if block code and also outside of the if block. The word skipped. All right. Now if I were to remove the print code here, leaving our if statement to execute nothing, running this program then gives a syntax error in the console. So if else statements are required to define their response code and this code is placed right below them with indentation. So just like how our print statement is placed here, but it has to be indented by four spaces to be considered as part of the if statements response. With no indentation, we'll get the indentation error as you can see here. Awesome. Now we can apply some code to give an alternate response if the if statement fails here with a false condition. We can do that by applying another statement called the else statement. So let's just make our if condition false again with 100 greater than 1000 and also changing its response to just print true. So the else block is similarly structured like the if block here, having executable code below it with indentation, and our response code below can be anything like print 100 not greater than 1000. So in the case of else statements, they don't carry any condition, given that they are already connected to the condition of the if statement before them. 100 greater than 1000 here. So the else block serves as a counter response if the if condition fails. By running the program now, we'll see that the else block gets executed, saying 100 is not greater than 1000, and the if block is skipped over. Awesome. If I made the if condition true though, with 100 less than 1000, and then run the program, you'll see that the if condition is now accepted and prints out its response true here. So the else block gets skipped over. Sweet. So this is a basic introduction of control flow with if else statements, and we as human beings actually perform control flow on a daily basis, if you think about it. Say if I wanted to buy a pizza from Pizza Hut with a budget of $2, and I may decide between two pizza deals, one deal can be a big deal. So my if condition will first be to see if the tastier and more bigger pizza deal is less than or equal to $2, and if it's not, then I'll go for the cheaper deal, which will be our else condition in this case. So let's put in our print statements. For the if block, it can be bigger and tastier deal. Sweet. <laughs> and for the else block, we can print the dollar meal. Still yummy. All right. By running the program now, you can see that the else block is executed and we therefore decided to go for the $1 meal, since the big deal's price is not less than or equal to our budget. Yes, I know. What a dream would it be to have big pizzas for two or three dollars, yes? <laughs> okay, moving on. 
So there are actually more statement blocks that we can apply after if statements. If we had one more condition to look at, say that not only do I want to see if there's at least a $2 pizza deal, say I'll be okay with a deal of $1.5 as well. So to apply this next option, I can do so by applying what's called an elif statement, short for else if, which can take our condition, say some deal is less than or equal to our budget, and maybe just add a print here saying it's an okay deal. All right. When I run this program now, our elif case gets executed and prints out it's an okay deal, skipping over the other statement blocks. All right. And this is because the first condition here is a false, so Python moves to the next block, checking the elif condition which says that some deal of $1.5 is less than or equal to our budget of $2, which is quite true, and therefore we decide to go for this deal. Awesome. So the order of conditional blocks here is important to keep in mind, where we always start first with an if statement, and if needed, we can define more else if conditions afterwards. It can be more than one elif condition, and else statement here is considered as the final statement block to be checked, given if the if and else if statements fail. Alright. Now I'm gonna do something funny here. Let's say our big deal's price dropped to $1.5. So now if I run the program, the first statement gets printed out, bigger and tastier deal. Since the if condition gives a true value first, now saying the big deal's price of $1.5, is less than or equal to my budget, and the next conditional statements are then skipped over. Awesome. If I were to just change the elif here to an if condition, we'll then have two separate if statements. And when I run this program now, we'll get both if statement responses printed out. Now why does that happen? The thing is that as long as one if block here is followed by another if block, and if both of them have true conditions, they both won't be connected to each other in any way and will be executed separately. So the else if and else blocks you see here are now only connected to the most immediate if statement block before them. The if condition saying some deal is less than or equal to our budget. And the first if statement is not connected in any way to the else if and else blocks here. Sweet. Basically every if statement here forms its own control flow series. And we've just made two series here. The first one's about the big deal and our budget, after which you can also include its own else if and else blocks. And then the next series is based on some deal and our budget condition. All right. Using more than one if else control flow can come in quite handy when we'd like to perform multiple conditional checks for certain programming tasks. Awesome. So I've covered a little bit on pizzas. Oh, sorry, if else statements. Yeah, I think we've talked a lot about pizzas, but anyway, I hope this video helped you gain some knowledge about if-else conditions, and you'll see in our next tutorials how control flow can be extended further with iteration conditions, known for for loops and while loops. Awesome. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like or a subscribe, and stay tuned for the next episodes. I hope you have an awesome day then, take care. And assalamu alaikum.